Good day grade 11s, welcome to your next lesson in week 31. We're still looking at probability and in order to make sure that you got to grips with dependent and independent events, let's look at a couple of examples. The marching band is holding a raffle at a football game with two prizes. After the first ticket is pulled out and the winner determined, the ticket is taped to the prize. The next ticket is pulled out to determine the winner of the second prize. Are the two events independent? Explain. Now, before we even think about this exact case, let's think about what it means for events to be independent. It means that the outcome of one event doesn't affect the outcome of the other event. Now, in this situation, the first event, the first event, after the first ticket is pulled out and the winner determined, the ticket is taped. The ticket is taped to the prize. Then the next ticket is pulled out to determine the winner of the second prize. Now, the winner of the second prize, the possible winners, the possible outcomes for the second prize is dependent on who was pulled out for the, for the first prize. You can imagine if, if, the, if there's three tickets, let's say there's tickets A, B, and C in the bag, and the first and for the first prize, they pull out ticket A. They pull out ticket A. That's for the first prize. For the first prize. Now, when we think about who could be pulled out for the second prize, it's only going to be tickets B or C. It'll only be tickets B or C. Now, the first prize could have gone the other way. It could have been A, B, and C. The first prize could have gone to, tick, to ticket B. And then the possible outcomes for the second prize would be A, would be A or C. So the possible outcomes for the second event, for the second prize, are completely dependent, are completely dependent on what happened or what ticket was pulled out from for the first prize. So these are not independent events. The second event, the outcomes for it, are dependent on what happened in the first event. So they are not, they are not independent, independent. The way that we could have made them independent is after the first ticket was pulled out, if they just wrote down the name or something, and then put that ticket back in. Instead, they taped it to the prize. But if they put that ticket back in, then the second prize, it would have still, it would have still had all the tickets there. It wouldn't have mattered who picked out, who was picked out in the first time because their name was just written down, but their ticket was put back in. And then you would have been independent. So if you had replaced the ticket, you would have been independent. But since they didn't replace the ticket, they taped it to the prize. These are not independent I events. Right, grade 11s, I think it was a very way, good way to explain independent and dependent events. Let's look at another example. On a multiple choice test, problem one has four choices, and problem two has three choices. That should be choices. Each problem has only one correct answer. What is the probability of randomly guessing the correct answer on both problems? Now, the, uh, the probability of guessing the correct answer on each problem, these are independent events. So let's write this down. The probability of correct, correct on on problem on number one, on problem number one, is independent, or let me write it this way, probability of correct on number one, and probability, and probability of correct on number two, on problem two, are independent, are independent, are independent which means that the outcome of one of the events of guessing on the first on the first problem isn't going to affect the probability of guessing correctly on the second problem Independ independent events so the combined the probability of guessing on both of them so that means that the probability that the probability of being correct on guessing correct on one and number two is going to be equal to the product of these probabilities. And we're going to see why that is visually in a second, but it's going to be the probability of correct on number one times the probability, the probability of being correct on number two. Now what are the what are each of these probabilities? On number one, there are four choices, there are four possible outcomes. And only one of them is going to be correct. Each one only has one correct answer. 
So the probability of being correct on problem one is one fourth. And then the probability of being correct on problem number two now, problem number two has three choices, so there's three possible outcomes, and there's only one correct one. So only one of them are correct. So probability of correct on number two is one-third. Probability of guessing correct on number one is one-fourth. The probability of doing on both of them, on both of them, is going to be its product. So it's going to be equal to one-fourth times one-third is, is one-twelfth. Now, to see kind of visually why this makes sense, Let's draw a little chart here, and we did a similar thing for when we thought about when we thought about rolling two separate dice. So let's think about problem number one. Problem number one has four choices, only one of which is correct. So let's write. So it has four choices. So it has one. Let's write incorrect choice one, incorrect choice two, incorrect choice three, and then it has the correct choice over there. So those are the four choices. They're not going to necessarily be in that order on the exam, but we can just list them in this order. Now problem number two. Problem number two has three choices, only one of which is correct. So problem number two has incorrect choice one, incorrect choice two, and then let's say the third choice is correct. It's not necessarily in that order, but we know it has two incorrect and one correct choices. Now what are all of the different possible outcomes? We can draw a little bit of a grid here. We can draw a grid here. All of these possible outcomes. Let's draw all of the outcomes. Each of these cells or each of these boxes in a grid are a possible outcome. You could, you're just guessing. You're randomly choosing one of these four. You're randomly choosing one of these four. So you might get incorrect choice one and incorrect choice one in in incorrect choice in problem number one and then incorrect choice in problem number two, that would be that cell right there. Maybe you get this maybe you get problem number one correct, but you get incorrect choice number two in problem number two. So these would represent all of the possible outcomes when you guess on each problem. And which of these outcomes represent getting correct on both? Well getting correct on both is only this one. Correct on choice one and correct on choice on problem number two. And so that's one one of the possible outcomes, and how many total outcomes are there? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Out of 12 possible outcomes. Or, since these are independent events, you can multiply. You see that there are 12 outcomes, because there's 12 possible outcomes. So there's four possible outcomes for problem number one, times the three possible outcomes for problem number two, and that's also where you get a 12. That was an awesome example of how to use the fact that things are independent. Let's look at one final example. Find the probability of rolling even numbers three times using a six-sided die numbered from one to six. So let's just figure out the probability of rolling it each of the times. So the probability of rolling even numbers. So even roll on six-sided six-sided die. So let's think about that probability. Well, how many total outcomes are there? How many possible rolls could we get? Well, you get one, two, three, four, five, six. And how many of them satisfy these conditions, that it's an even number? Well, it could be a two, it could be a four, or it could be a six. So the probability is the events that match what you need, your condition for right here. So three of the possible events are an even roll. And it's a, out of a total of six possible events. Out of a total of six possible events. So there is a, three over six is the same thing as one half probability of rolling even on each roll. Now, they're going to roll, they want to roll even three times. And these are all going to be independent events. Every time you roll, it's not going to affect what happens in the next roll, despite what some gamblers might think. It has no impact on what happens on the next roll. So the probability of rolling even three times, so the probability of rolling even three times is equal to the probability of an even roll even roll one time or even roll on six sided die this thing over here is equal to that thing times times that thing again All right that's our first roll let me copy we paste it times that thing and then times and then that times that thing again 
right? That's our first roll, which is that. That's our second roll. That's our third roll. They're independent events. So this is going to be equal to 1 half. That's the same 1 half right there, times 1 half, times 1 half, which is equal to 1 over 8. There's a 1 in 8. There are one in, there's a 1 in 8 possibility that you roll even numbers on all three rolls, on this roll, this roll, and that roll. Right, grade 11s, I hope that these three examples have shown you how to use the fact that things are dependent and independent. Um, please go practice, 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 and then do the questions at the end of the assessment. Um, have a great day.